Welcome back to the Mark Janot Show, the tech show about hacking. In this video, I'm going to cover roughly eight cybersecurity trends in 2023 that you need to pay attention to. So without further ado, let's get right into it. We're going dark. Cybercrime is growing exponentially. According to Cybersecurity Ventures, the cost of cybercrime is predicted to hit $8 trillion in 2023 and will grow to $10.5 trillion in 20, by 2025. Fraud is trending digital, especially identity theft. Fraud has always been a societal problem, but is being compounded by the expansion of criminals in the digital realm. The cost is going higher as more people do their banking and buying online. Federal Trade Commission, also known as FTC, data shows that consumers reported losing nearly $8.8 .8 billion to fraud in 2022, an increase of more than 30% over the previous year. Much of this fraud came from fake investment scams and imposter scams. Perhaps most alarming in this report was that there are, were over 1.1 million reports of identity theft received through the FTC's identitytheft.gov website. Ransomware and phishing. The current state of cyber affairs is an especially alarming one because ransomware attacks are growing not only in numbers, but also in the financial and reputational cost to businesses and organizations. Wait a minute. Currently, ransomware most via phishing activities is the top threat to both the public and private sectors. Ransomware allows hackers to hold computers and even entire networks hostage for electronic cash payments. In the recent case of Colonial Pipeline, a ransomware attack disrupted energy supplies across the east coast of the United States. In 2022, 76% of organizations were targeted by a ransomware attack out of which 64% were actually infected. Only 50% of these organizations managed to retrieve their data after paying the ransom. Additionally, a little over 66% of respondents reported to have had multiple isolated infections. So here is the list, roughly eight. That was your bonus. Let's start. Number one, evolving geopolitical environment. The war launched by Russia and Ukraine is emblematic of the first risk encompassing the key factors of lowered inhibition for cyber attacks, digital assaults on critical infrastructure, misinformation and disinformation campaigns, and protectionist approaches to trade that can leave companies who purchase technology products from abroad even more vulnerable. That was number one of eight. Here's number two. Accelerated uh, accelerating cyber arms race. As attackers step up their assaults on beleaguered organizations, defenders must keep pace in an environment that disproportionately favors malicious actors who use commonly available consumer tools and trickery to achieve their ends while also targeting national security threats. That was two of eight. Here's three of eight. Global economic headwinds. Stock market volatility and inflation pose risk across the cybersecurity sector, threatening supply chains, forcing businesses to make difficult decisions about allocating resources, and possibly harming innovation as startups face a weakened capital supply market. Three of eight. This is four of eight. Overlapping, conflicting, and subjective regulations. Companies in the U.S. face a complex patchwork of re uh, required cybersecurity, data security, and privacy regulations implemented by national, national, sorry, state and local authorities with varying prescriptive requirements, including a uh, balkanization of data privacy and breach disclosure laws, rapidly elevating security control uh, requirements, and one-size-fits-all regulation. Four of eight, this is five of eight, lagging corporate governance. Although there has been a significant improvement in the priority organization's place on cybersecurity in recent years, many firms still have not placed cybersecurity specialists in leadership positions, including CISOs and CSOs from the C-suite and boards of directors and keep cybersecurity separate from organizational objectives. That was five of eight, here's six of eight. Lack of investment, preparedness, and resilience. Both public and private sectors are still insufficiently prepared for a cybersecurity disaster due to incomplete and imperfect data, lack of crisis preparedness, disaster recovery, and business continuity planning, failure to conduct crisis exercises and planning vendor risk concentration, and insufficient third-party assurance capabilities, the escalating cost of cyber insurance, and chronic poor cyber hygiene and security awareness among the general public. 
That was six of eight. Here's seven of eight. Vulnerable infrastructure. Critical infrastructure remains vulnerable as organizations rely heavily on state and local agencies and third and fourth party vendors who may lack necessary cybersecurity controls, particularly in finance, utilities, and government service sectors, which often run on unpatched and outdated code and legacy systems. That was seven of eight. Here's eight. The last one, not the least, talent scar uh, scarcity. The ongoing shortage of qualified security personnel continues to expose organizations to cyber risks, made even more glaring by insufficient automation of tasks needed to execute good cybersecurity. So those were cybersecurity trends I feel that you need to take uh, lo a look at. Uh, do you think there are better cybersecurity trends, uh, the ones that I've missed? I want to know your opinion please hit the subscribe button. Please hit the notification bell. I love you. Stay safe. See you on the next video.